to Mothens going here in this round. Miguel Torres is just taking pretty good control of this fight so far. Under a minute to go here in round number four from Chicago. Miguel Torres, the defending champion in the white trunks. Takeya Mizugaki has gone almost complete four rounds with nice the champion. Left And they continue to go toe to toe in a classic here in Chicago. Mizukagi got caught with a nice right hand right over the left there. Mizukagi got a great chin. He's taking some big shots from Miguel Torres. Another big flurry here to round out round number four as we now go under 12 seconds to go in the fight in the fourth round. So we will see a fifth round as both fighters glare at one another. This is an absolute classic on the streets of Chicago, Frank. Did anyone think it would go to the fifth round? I think right now we've been spoiled by Miguel Torres just taking guys out so quickly. We all are impressed right now by Mizugaki by being in the fifth round. Nice combination there with Miguel Torres. Pushing against the cage, the left hand came through. You see here he comes over the top, he has the hand trapped perfectly executing an overhand elbow. Again, just the, the superior jab of Miguel Torres. And Musugaki, though, did a great job of controlling here and driving a knee right into Miguel Torres, but the champ, great chin, was able to fire a left hook right afterwards. Okay. Stay strong, give me five more minutes. Work him. Work him. He's, he's trying to break. All right? That shot is always there. But just switch up and throw that high kick to his face. He's leaning over. Takeya Mizugaki has traveled over 10,000 miles to make his U.S. fighting debut in Frank. I think it's been successful win, lose, or draw on this one. Well, he's impressed everybody. I don't think no matter what the outcome of this fight is, he's moved up in the rankings. No touching of gloves for the fifth and final round. These guys want to go to war for the final five minutes here in the last round. Muzugaki just, he telegraphs when he comes in. You can see every time he just, he, he loads his left leg up by fading over to his left there like he's doing right there. And Miguel Torres is able to identify it, but he's doing a great job of fading away from it. He has that a wizard again with the wrist control over the side, landing some good knees. Since his fifth round, he's throwing combinations like that. If Miguel Torres wants to send a message. He does not want this going to the judges. Even though he may be ahead on all cards, he'd like to send this young Japanese warrior back to Japan with a loss and a hard knockout. Yeah. But he's unable to do it. And Miguel Torres is not happy with anybody going the distance with him right now. Mizugaki, Mizugaki is just... <laughs> Man, he's in there just trading back and forth, though. Oh. Oh, and a slip by Torres. That's how much Mizugaki respects the ground game of Torres. He has him on the ground. He doesn't, doesn't shoot in on him, just stays back. Oh, straight left lane. Yeah, it's just because Mizugaki just is too... He telegraphs that too much. He's, he's moving his face forward. See, his head moves in, and when Miguel wants to, he either fades back, or in the exchange we saw just before that, he fires that jab right down the middle. The final three minutes of this five-round classic for the Bantam weight belt. And really, Mr. Gaki's clinch, he's just getting dominated in the clinch with Miguel right now. I mean, he's able to land a few shots in there, but for the most part, Miguel's tying him up, grinding his head in there. He's able to keep locking up and coming in with those overhand elbows and landing those knees on the side of his uh, Muzugaki's uh, ribs.
But, Frank, this is just going to come down to a will. And Torres just seems to have the will to press on. Mizugaki happy that he's at this point. But I think his fatigue is now starting to really take its toll. This is a guy going back to the body shot. I think it's the first one we've seen him throw you know, in the last two rounds. I thought he was having a lot of success with that, but I think maybe the fact that he telegraphs his forward movement and Miguel's been hitting with the jab or fading away has been causing that problems with him. <laughs> Miguel hit him with his own uh, left hook to the body. Level. Again, look at Miguel. He's able to tie up both of Musagaki's uh, hands with one. He's using his left hand over the top, and then he ends up getting grabbing wrist control. There again, he got some hand tied up with both hands. Both hands tied up with one. And then he's transferring over traditional wrist tie. Wow, look at that. In the fifth and final round, we are down to the last 60 seconds. And I agree with you, Frank. Mizugaki's ranking has certainly shot up. Frank, let's go to the fifth round. Look at this exchange. That's just been, that's a testament of how this fight's been. Even though Miguel Torres is pushing forward and throwing blows, and there's Musagaki trying to throw blows right back in there. What a war back and forth. One of the best fights I think we're going to see, oh. we've seen yet, and probably we've seen in a while. Miguel Torres and Takeya Mizugaki after 20 minutes of high intensity MMA fighting were able to put that show on in the fifth round. to the judges. While we wait for the judges to tabulate their scorecards, you won't believe what we've got for you. Next up for World Extreme Cage Fighting, we head back to Sacramento, California for a classic. Uriah Faber is on a mission to regain the title he lost last year. I want that belt, man. Give me my belt. But reigning champion Mike Brown is the number one featherweight in the world. I would love to fight Uriah again. I know that's what the fans love. Two unstoppable forces collide for the rematch and the WEC's greatest fight ever. Bud Light and World Extreme Cage Fighting present Brown vs. Faber 2. Live Sunday, June 7th from Arco Arena in Sacramento, California. Only on Versus. That should be a great one coming up to see that rematch. And, but first and foremost, what a fight we've had here tonight with Miguel Torres. Taki Mazugaki, what a war. We've actually got to see the champ go five rounds and see what he could do during the distance and being pushed to the limits by Mazugaki. I don't think, you know, I mean, I know he had the top five ranking, but a lot of people, you know, just been spoiled by Miguel Torres, just completely annihilating the competition. To see him in such a close fight right now was definitely a pleasure and an enjoyment for the fans here. 
K side in Chicago. We now go inside the cage. Joe Martinez has the highly anticipated decision. Ladies and gentlemen, five exciting rounds in the cage. We go to the scorecards one more time, Chicago. Let's hear it for these two world-class bantamweights. They left it all in the cage tonight. Here are the judges' scoring totals. Judges Kelvin Caldwell and Matthew White score about the same, 49 to 46. And Judge Sal Diamato has it, 48 to 47. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And still, WAC Bantamweight Champion of the World, Miguel Angel Torres. Miguel, congratulations. This has got to be a sweet victory, not only because it went the distance in an absolute war, but that you retained the belt here in your hometown. First of all, speak to the challenger that came over from Japan and took this fight. You know what, Takea? You were a great challenger. I didn't expect that big of a fight out of you. He came on, he banged, he's doing it the whole time. I have a lot of respect for him. No one has ever taken me that far in my career yet. I have a lot of respect for Takea, and I want to say thank you for taking the fight on short notice. He cut you early in the second round. How bad did that hurt you? Uh, I didn't get hurt real bad. I just couldn't see too good on my right eye. I got blood in my eye and I couldn't see that many times. Like two or three rounds I couldn't see. But like I said, you know, I hung in there. I trained hard. I trained for situations like that. And I want to thank all the fans for being here and supporting me. Thank you guys very much. For the fans that were watching at home on Versus and the fans here at the UIC Pavilion, what was going through your mind in that fifth and final round? Uh, the fifth round, just to be a champion. You know, I want to fight the best guys in the world. The kid's one of those guys. I knew I had to push him and make him tired and take the fight away from him. And that's what I went out and did. I wanted to make a good fight for you guys. Your winner is still champion, Miguel Angel Torres. <laughs> Miguel, one last question for you. Because he is sitting ringside, Brian Bowles is waiting. Your thoughts on fighting Mr. Bowles? Uh, he's in line, he's next. Brian, get healthy, well, I don't know where you're at. Wherever you are, Brian, whenever you're ready, man, we'll do it, bro, I'm ready. Whenever you're ready. There, and there you go. Whenever you're ready, he's next in line, I was gonna fight Brian. Yep. He got hurt, but I know he's gonna be back. He's a tough guy, and I'm waiting for him now. And Brian, first of all, we have to ask you, we know how you injured your back. How are you feeling? Will you be ready soon? Oh yeah, I'll be ready to, uh, come August, I'll probably be ready, you know. Um, it, it, was, it was a struggle at first. I was down two or three weeks on my back, and um, you know, I'll be coming back. Was... And your thoughts on what you just saw? Uh, it was a war, man. It was a fight of the night. I loved it. It was awesome. Congratulations to your champion. We will see him back in the cage soon. We saw a great night of fights in the WEC tonight. For all the latest news and information on World Extreme Cage Fighting, head to Versus.com and WEC.TV. Coming up next, it's Sports Soup. What a great night of fighting here in Chicago. Two great warriors going the distance for five rounds. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast tonight, folks. On behalf of my partner, Frank Mir, and our entire Versus crew, I'm Todd Harris saying good night from the UIC Pavilion in Chicago, Illinois. We'll see you next time right here on Versus.